is our class. This is Shemai Juan. I have reading for me, Barzal Gabar. And we're going to teach today's class of March 3rd, 2018. Okay, uh, we just finished up wrapping up with Purim, which was uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, finished up that Wednesday evening. Uh, today is Shabbat class, and we have the next uh, feast day coming up is the Passover, which is going to be uh, March 31st. Some brothers are keeping it March 30th. Some brothers are keeping it even today. But, uh, you know, most high willing, all of us will be in unity soon to keep the Passover right. We keep it according to the new moon, which is when it's not a full moon, according to what we know, and according to what our forefathers have kept, they've always kept the new moon, which was a dark moon. All right? And we counted from that to keep our feast days. So today, without further ado, we're going to go into the class and we're going to read uh, Colossians 3, verse 17 to start off with the class today. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Yahweh, giving thanks to Yahweh the Father by him. God. Everything we do in word or deed is through the Father and through the Son. Our prayers go to the Son who takes our prayers to the Father. All right, so uh, today's class is called the effectiveness of speaking outside. And when you look at the Israelites, that's what we do. We all speak outside. That's how most people know who we are based on us speaking outside. So is this scriptural that we must speak outside? And when we go through the scriptures, we're going to show you that it's scriptural. And this is something that we must do. And is it effective for us to speak outside, outdoors? And the answer is yes. It's very effective to speak outside. What is the main purpose for speaking outside? Anybody know what's the main reason for speaking outside? Because we're supposed to go to the chief place of concourse. Okay. Gather the brethren. What was the second part? To gather the brethren. To gather the, the brethren. Okay, that, that's mainly what it is. Basically what it is is to deliver a message. So when we go out to speak, it's to deliver a message to who? To the 12 tribes of Israel who are scattered abroad. That is the main reason for us to go out there is to deliver a message. When you look at the post office system and you see how people uh, send letters to other people, normally they, they uh, write on the letter the sender, and to the person they're sending it to. When they send it to that person, they drop it off in the mailbox. It falls into the circulation of the post office system with all these other envelopes. But what's the difference between that envelope that you deliver versus the other letters that's being delivered? Is you have a distinctive person on that envelope that it's supposed to go to. Okay. Once that envelope gets to that destinated spot where it's supposed to go to, it's reached its destination to the sender, to the person they're supposed to send it to. All right, so uh, with that, you have a message. You're going to get that message. You're the only one to get that message. When we read the Bible, it is a message to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the message belongs to. The Most High created this book to be a letter to us all who are in the truth. And to all those who want to hear, you can hear the message, but it's kind of like you ear hustling on a conversation. Basically that's what's going on. You're ear hustling on a conversation. This is a message to the Israelites. Uh, so what I want to do is look at John 18 and 20. John 18 and 20. And I want to show you what Yahushai did when it came to delivering this message. He was one of the main orators to go out on the streets and teach. And this is what we're all, all, this is how we all know Hamashiach Yahushai, who the world calls Jesus Christ. This is how we know what he did. When we see the movies, when we hear stories, it's always dealing with Hamashiach being outside and dealing with the people. So read that out. John 18 and 20. Yahushai answered him, I speak openly to the world. Uh -huh. 
I ever taught in the synagogue mm -hmm. and in the temples, right. whether the Jews always resort. Right. So it's where the Jews always resort. You bring your microphone? No. Amen. Yeah. To wherever the Jews always resort. So, as you see right here, this letter is being sent to where? To where the Jews resort. He spoke openly to the world, to the Jews, to the Israelites, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And secret have I said nothing. In secret, he has said nothing. When you look at us, all the movements that you have ever seen with the, uh, with the Negro population in America, we've always made everything we've done publicly. We have never done anything secret. When you look at the Muslims, that was publicly. Everything they did was about, even when you look at Farrakhan, he posts his speeches online. We're not hiding anything. All our speeches are publicly seen. Uh, our pastors in these churches, in these Christian churches, they post everything they do where you can see it. Everything we do is posted. You go on C-SPAN, you see uh, the leaders of our congregations or the leaders of our communities. Everything is posted. Okay? So when you see that, you have to understand with our people, Everything has to be um, spoken openly so no one can discredit us from what we're saying and, and seeing that it's going directly to a distinctive person. Okay? Read John 18 and 20 again. John 18 verses 20. Mm -hmm. Yahweh shall answer him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. Mm -hmm. In secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me. Right, and that's what we say. When we go out there in the street speak, people see, see us all the time. We could go to that corner, we could go to the corners where we speak on a regular basis and talk to any, any, any of those bodegas and ask them, what do these guys teach? Do they come out here on the corner? What do they normally do when they're out here? What are they speaking of? People should know already what we teach. We're not hiding nothing. There's people that walk by us and they recognize us. They stop. They know what we're teaching. That's why they stop. People up in the windows, when they hear our voices echo, even though they can't stand us, they know what we teach. You know, we had brothers dump a whole bucket of water on the whole camp once. Remember that? Yeah. Why did they do that? Because the guy knows we come out every week. He dumped the water on us and ran like a coward so we couldn't see him. <laughs> Ain't that what he did? Took off yeah. running. But he knew he couldn't confront us that way, so he had to be a coward and throw the water on us. But hey, we openly spoke to the world. Everyone has always known what we do when we go out there and speak. Just like the Hamashiach Yavashah did the same thing. Okay, can you keep going up? You want to answer this? What's your hour? Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me. What, what I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. Behold, they know what I said. Come on. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Yahawashah with the palm of his hand, uh -huh. saying, Answer thou the high priest. So. Right, so he said, Answer the high priest. He asked you a question. What were you teaching? And that's just like our people. They don't want to understand. They, they called him getting smart, but basically what, what he was doing was telling the truth. He spoke openly to the world. The world. So that's our job, to speak openly to the world. So that's the effectiveness of speaking, is going out there on the streets. It is effective. Right? Because this is what our forefathers did. They spoke openly to the world. Give me Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. Nehemiah 8 and 1. This topic is, is something that all Israelites should meditate on because you have some Israelites out there who don't believe we should be out there speaking. They say this is not the time to be out there speaking. You have some Israelites who won't go out there and speak. Then you have some Israelites who just watch us on YouTube instead of going out there and do the work. You know what I'm saying? And so this is our job, this is what we're supposed to do according to all our forefathers throughout history. They've always spoke openly to the world, just like Mashiach just said. Always. We had to be a public example 
to who? To the rest of the tribes of Israel. Okay? Right. And to show you an example of uh, what, cause what our forefathers did. Because when Yahawashai came, remember you talked about the bricks. We're all of bricks. And we stack on one another of helping each other. Not necessarily as you, if, if you were to camp, you not necessarily have to be out there speaking. You could just, you know, stand guard or hand out flyers or bring the brother some water, you know, that's out there. So that's, that's all of helping brothers together. You know what I mean? So, then, you know, you'll hear other Israelite camps say, well, you shouldn't be affiliated with a camp. But that doesn't make any sense. You know, that doesn't make any sense. All a camp is is brotherhood. That's right. all it is. All it is. It's just brotherhood. We're trying to unite. We're trying to do what the Most High wanted us to do. All through the scriptures, he says, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. Why is he saying that? Because he knows we're not a desirable people in this land. We're not desired. People don't want to be around us. I mean, you walk by certain people and they're in their cars, they lock their doors. We're not a desired people. It's, it's simple. So, I mean, it's elementary, man. It's elementary what we're going over. Okay? Read Nehemiah 8 and 1. Nehemiah 8, verses 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the streets that was before the water gate. Before the water gate. The water gate is something that's outside. That's before the... In every city back then, you had a well within the city. That well was like the circulation of the, uh, most of the people gathering. People would go there and they would have conversations and they would have talks. It's kind of like going down the city hall. The well is where everybody would go get water. That was like a treasurable place to go. You would see people, Sister Sister Shirley, you would see Uncle Riley, you would see everybody there. That was the place to go. All right, go ahead. And it says, uh, And they spoke unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, uh -huh. which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Mm -hmm. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. He said something very serious here. He said, and all those who can hear with understanding. So when we're out there in the streets, there's not many people who have understanding of what we're saying. Why? Because they're not trying to seek after the Most High. That's the difference. You wonder why there's not large crowds gathering around us? Because no one is seeking after the Most High. You might get one, you might get two, you might get three, but nobody's seeking for the Most High. That's the whole problem right now. All right? Drop down to six. Uh, uh, keep going, actually, keep going. I have a question, Hot. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, Hot. You said no one's seeking after the Most High, but can they seek? Because they tell you that the, the people are not called, but they're, they're drawn. The Most High, like, draws them to the Word. So, yeah, sure. they truly seek? That's if they're not drawn? Well, it says uh, they can be called. But what? Not chosen. Not chosen. So there's a lot that's going to be called. Huh. But if you're chosen, even, you know, it's being, I'm going to show you an example. Good, good question. This is a good example of being called. So we're out there speaking. Now we've been out there speaking for years. We draw people every time we go out there. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four. Those people are called. Right. You know, every time we go out there, they're called. They're called to what? Listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to the word. But those that are chosen, that's okay. something totally different. Wow. Now you have a, it's just like the priest in Ezra, they were chosen to tell the children of Israel, this is the testament. That all the Levite priests should what? Get rid of the wives who are of Moab, Ammon, and so forth. Right? Those were chosen men. But those who are called are those who are listening. Those are the ones who want to know, what am I doing wrong? Those are the ones who are called. They're preparing their lives for what? The next kingdom. Go ahead. Second okay. um, Ezra, I mean, I mean, Nehemiah 8, verses 3. And he read it therein before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday, mm. before the men and the women, and those that could, could understand, in the ears of all that the people were attentive unto the book of the law. So they were attentive to the book of the law because this is the missing link. This is what everybody's missing. Our people don't understand this Bible. They were attentive to this. Mm -hmm. We're reading out of this. It's not our own words. People always tell us, I want to hear your words. 
No, the Bible says that these people were called that were attentive to the law of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's important. Keep going on. Um, verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood upon the pulpit of wood, which they had made for the, for the purpose. And beside them stood Menadiah and Shemaiah and Aniah and Uriah and Hakiah and Messiah <clears throat> on his right hand and on his left hand Penadiah and uh, Mashiach Mashiach, sorry Mishael. Mishael and Mayakiah and Hasawan Hasawan and Hashabana Zachariah. <laughs> Brother's trying to get these names down, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's good. I mean, hell, uh, I mean, we're not there. Right. <laughs> you know, that was a different time. But we try our best to say the names. But as you see, it says he had brothers on his right hand and he had brothers on his left hand. That's how we do it today. And similar to what? What is, what is that? A uh, That is also a, um, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, not metaphoric. But it's a copy, it's a copy sheet of what the Most High has up in the kingdom, carbon. up in heaven. It's a carbon yeah. copy. So whatever is in heaven is on earth, right? Mm -hmm. The Most High is doing the same thing. It's a prototype. It's a, there it is, thank you. Yeah. It's a prototype of what's in heaven. The Most High is sitting up on, on his throne. On his right hand, he has what? Spirits, right. angels. On his left hand, he has spirits, he has angels. Mm -hmm. He has a 12 and 12, 24 elders up there. Yeah, they're up there too. So it's a prototype. Okay, and I tell you what, you don't want this brother. This brother was sitting, standing on top of what? This uh, pulpit. Yeah, it was a pulpit. Now, for him to stand on that, there's no throne up there, but the Most High sits on the throne. You don't want the Most High to stand up off his throne. Mm. He got off his throne. This place oh, is done. Done. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I can say it's that. Yeah, the Most High stand up on his throne. It's it's over. Night night. <laughs> night night. Right. So jump down to six. Huh? Okay, uh, verse six. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great power, and all the people answered, "Amen, amen." With lifting up their head hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Most High with their faces to the ground. No, they worshipped the man who was speaking. It says they were worshipping the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. See, these people knew the sense of not worshiping a man. Today's time, people are looking for a man to worship. They were happy. Don't, don't get me wrong. They were happy to see these brothers stand there. They was getting the word and they was thirsty for the word. But what, what did the angel tell uh, uh, John the Revelator? Stand up for we're brethren. Don't bow to me. Bow, bow down to the Most High. And I've got to, can I uh, bring out a script on that? What did you do, brother? Yeah, go ahead. This is um, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departeth from the Lord. Mm. Wow. That's a heavy verse. That's, that's what we've seen in the last 100 to 200 years here in America. Mm -hmm. Men trusted in men. Uh, can you give me um, uh, Exodus chapter 3? And let's read uh, verse 1. I want to show you. Even the Most High spoke outside. The Most High always speaks outside, right? So if he's speaking outside, what do you think we should be doing? Speaking outside to those who are called, right? Yeah, following the Bible. Read. Exodus 3, verses 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. So he was busy. He was keeping the flock. Just like we see people on the streets. They be busy. Go ahead. The priest of Midian. Uh -huh. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert mm -hmm. and came to the mountain of the Most High, even to Hera, Hera, Hera. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Is that inside? Mm -hmm. There's a bush outside. Go ahead. <clears throat> and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord, the Most High, saw that he turned aside to see, the Most High called unto him 
out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not nigh hither, but off thy, so put off thy shoes from off thy feet, mm -hmm. for the place wherein thou stand is holy ground. Where you stand is holy ground. He said, take off your shoes here. But he was outside. That's the whole point. He taking off his shoes outside because he's on holy ground. So I got a question. Yeah. Um, so I know we're when all when the Lord is all caps, he's talking about Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But isn't that burning bush and all the all those miracles in the Old Testament? Wasn't that Yahweh shot? It was Yahweh shot. But that's why he didn't take any fame to his name. Oh. It, it, was, it was all in the name of, of the Father. Everything is the Father. You know, even though we read it right here, it yeah. tells you it was, uh, the angel came and spoke to him in the burning bush. We know it was the Father. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why he said, I am who he wants me to be. I am that I am. And that's why I said, there is no Savior, but... Yeah, yeah. I'm his arm. Right, man. Yeah. But a lot of people don't want to know that anyway. They don't want to know that that was the son that Con. Moses was right. talking to. Con. But even though it was the man most high. The man I am who gave a man. Right, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. We take that what they want. I don't know what it is for Corinthians, I think, or... Yeah, or it's like that yeah. Corinthians right. 10. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, let's get it just to prove a point. You gotta prove it now. Yeah. We bring it out. First Corinthians 10. So a lot of people, there's a lot of brothers out there who are Old Testament Hebrews, and they don't believe anything said in the New Testament. So when it's bringing this out, a lot of them will look down or frown on the New Testament. But uh Yahusha is a living testament. You have uh uh, scholars back in those times, scribes back in those, in those times who prophesied that Hamashiach would come. Mm -hmm. And he also wrote in the historian books that he did come and said who he was. So as whether you want to believe or not, the scriptures tell you if you don't believe, you're condemned. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's for you to do and me to tell you, hey, follow this man. This man is the son of the father. Alright? Go ahead. First Corinthians 10 verses 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, mm -hmm. and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual meat, mm -hmm. and did all drink the same spiritual drink. What is the same spiritual meat? This word. This word. Mm -hmm. okay. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Yahawashah. Right. <clears throat> so that's who he was in the Old Testament. Okay, go back to Exodus 3. And what did you read? Did you read down to 5? Uh, I think it was uh, not in 5. Okay, go ahead. It says, uh, and he's, this is verse 5. Yeah, you, Three you, and five. you read that. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Uh, Exodus 3 verses 10 Come now therefore and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou may bring forth my people the children of Israel out of Egypt. So when the Most High came to Moses what did he give him? See when the Most High comes up on the earth and he deals with man there's only two reasons for him to come on the earth one is to deliver a message for you to take to the people and two judgment. Is judgment. Yep. So when you see all these people talk about, oh, I had a dream about Jesus and he talked to me and oh wow, I seen him. It was me. That's not the most high. You can dream all you want about Christ, I seen a glow and this and that. If it's if it's not a message to deliver to who? Where's the message going to? The Israelites. It's going to the Israelites. It's not going to the other nations. Going to the Israelites. And the judgment is coming on the other nations. Right. And possibly the Israelites. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? So those are the two things the Most High is coming down. So we have a message. The Israelites today is to bring forth this message to the word, to the world of Israel, and judgment to the nations. So when we speak, we are not sparing your feelings. It's not about us worrying about your feelings. It's about us delivering this message to our people to wake up before destruction comes on these nations. That's our job. 
We're not trying to sugar, sugar, uh, uh, sugar cut any cookies or anything here. All right, this is very serious. Go ahead, out. Verse eleven, and Moses said unto the Most High, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? Stop right there. Right? Don't read verse eleven. Actually, go to. Um, uh, jump over to Exodus 4 and go to 29. I want to show you, okay, so the Most High sent judgment on Pharaoh. He said, listen, if you don't let me go, the Most High is going to come and bring judgment on this place. That was Moses' job to bring that message to them. He kind of has the same message we have. And then he went to the children of Israel to tell them what? That we're going to be delivered if you hear these words, mm -hmm. like Nehemiah said to the people, if you understand these words, prepare yourself. Read that. This is uh, Exodus 4, verses 29. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. All the elders of the children of Israel. Those are the leaders. Go ahead. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord has spoken unto Moses. Mm -hmm. And did the signs in the sight of the people. Uh -huh. So he had to wake them up by showing them signs. So today we don't have miracles to do to people other than us coming out and saying we woke up. That's the only miracles that we had. Go ahead. And the people believed. Uh -huh. And when they heard that the, the Most High had visited the children of Israel, uh -huh. and that he had looked upon their affliction, when they bowed their heads and worship, then they bowed their heads. Oh, then they bowed their heads and worship. So the, the difference with them, them times and these times is that our people don't believe. <clears throat> In those times, you see that he did miracles in front of them, and they believed. They all believed, just like in Nehemiah. They everybody who's standing here all believe. When we go out there in the streets, they don't all believe. What do they do? They mock us. They talk uh -huh. bad about us. Uh -huh. They they don't even believe prophets still exist today. They don't know who they are. They, they, they don't know, know who they are. They never been taught correct. Okay. Correct. That's just true. Very very true. So that this is the issue that we're facing today. Big issue, man. Give me Ezekiel two and five. This is the issue, man, and and it's going to continue. The Most High has so much mercy on our people. It's just like me and uh, Brother Dante was talking earlier. When the Most High brought judgment, when Noah was here, how many days did he give them? How many days did he give the world to get, get themselves together? Man, he had a hundred, I think. Yeah. You no, know, I, mean, I mean, that was one thing, but when he finally said, I'm bringing judgment on the earth, you have only was it like six days or something? Six like days to six go. Days? Yeah. In six days, I'm going to flood the earth. That's when he gave his true message. Like it's over. Like it's over. Yeah. You know? Count that all aboard. Another time it was in Sodom. Uh, <laughs> Sodom, he did the same thing. He said, you know what? Lot, get your family together. Tomorrow morning we out. So he gave them a whole day to get themselves together. They had, they had time to go to sleep or wake up wherever they could wake up. He gave them a day. He didn't have to give them that. Did you say Ezra too? Ezra's too. Yeah, when uh, you read the scriptures, the, uh, the son-in-laws didn't even go. Yeah, the son-in-laws rejected him, yeah. and they mocked at him. They yeah. laughed at him. And Ezra's, he gave them a whole week for the men to get rid of their wives. Whole week. He said, get rid of your four wives and go into the kingdom. Some, some Israelites, hard-headed Israelites, didn't go. You know what I mean? But that was all that coming at the Hava Huh? I'm saying, like... People are taking heed, mocking, sure, crazy, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I always say, if your Christ is here today, they'll kill him again. Oh, easy. Mm -hmm. like, what are you talking about? You can't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. I know why. <laughs> Especially the house I came with that thunder. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. They, you know, you're looking at them with the red eyes, and you're like, you know, you're going to be judged. Yeah, man, they're going to try to do something to them. You know? Read Ezekiel 2 and 5. This is Ezekiel 2 verses 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, mm -hmm. for they are a rebellious house, mm -hmm. yet shall they know that there had been a prophet among them. Right, so if they don't want to listen, it's on them. It's on them. <laughs> There's been a prophet amongst them. Tell them what's coming. You said their prayer gonna be an abomination and turn you away from the law. Well, I'm telling you, he's telling you right there. Yeah. But then you know when you're out there speaking on the streets, 
People are watching you, they're hearing you, they're seeing your body language. And you know what, some people are conf uh, afraid to confront us. So, you know, sometimes you have brothers sitting around the corner listening, sitting on a uh, fire hydrant or on some bench listening to us mm -hmm. instead of coming around and confront. At least they're listening. Then you might have some brothers sitting in the car with their windows down. We see that all the time. Brothers just sitting in their car, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting in their car. We, sit, we had a big time dope dealer in West Oakland sitting in his car every time we come out. He sit, he pull up, roll down his windows and sit there and listen to us the whole time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody knew who he was. But he was what? Getting the word. He didn't want to confront us. But he was getting the word. Getting marked. I think that's it's true like what we do every day. Like we deposit the seed, but we might not see it flourish. We not, might not see the fruits of that seed being deposited. Sure. It, might, it might be flourished down the line or another crew or another Israelite brother mm -hmm. fully watered that right. thing and right. yeah. sprout. That's, That's true. the scripture on that. Mm -hmm. They say, um, I don't know. Damn, I forgot all about this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you get old. You're too young to be getting old. You're young, old man. <laughs> you gotta lift it. Yeah, man. And then put it. Yeah, hold it. See, bars are too old. See that? Yeah, man. <laughs> bars are used to be too old. Yeah, yeah, man. Tweet. He used a rock, so here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you use the matches, man. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that the word just don't go out and void, basically. The word yeah. never goes yeah. out and void. That's, yeah. that's what Even I'm saying. Even though sometimes we think it, it like, don't go out and void. But. but see, the thing about uh, when you're speaking, a lot of you. Brothers and sisters who are watching us online, one thing about speaking is you see everything when you speak. When you read, you don't see everything. Mm -hmm. But when you're the speaker, you notice everything. It's like your eyes kind of open. You see everybody walking. You see them not paying attention. You see their faces, how they look at you when they're walking by and, mm -hmm. you know, despite you and scorn. You, you see all that. So it's a whole different approach. You can almost get into their spirit when you when you talking and you can see what they how they feel. You know, so it's important for us to go out there and deal with the people. You know, so we, we gotta confront all these people head on. Uh, go to, go to um, Amos three and three. Amos three and three. Amos three verses three. Uh huh. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Right. Uh, two walk together unless they be agreed. And so that's why we're out there trying to give the sense so people can have understanding of what we're talking about. In order for us to walk together, we have to understand together. You see this room? Why is it, I mean, it's empty. I mean, it's brothers in here, but, you know, it should be jam-packed. You got the dogs standing up. I mean, we got two rooms here that we can actually use. We're in the smallest room. We got another room that's huge. Mm -hmm. The reason why we come to this room is because there's only about a, a lot of brotherhood of 10 or less. Yeah. Didn't know where we come. Plus but, the voice. Yeah. Right. But if they had the understanding, they had the understanding and they realized, hey, my children need to hear this. Just like you said, Brother Dante, that you know the word doesn't go out void. Mm -hmm. Even if we had children in this room, two, three, four years old, they can be goofing around, whatever in here. Guess what? You gonna get something. They gonna hear it and they gonna remember it years down the line. Like I remember my daddy or my mama used to bring me yep. to the school. I used to hear them talking about it's in their mind. I heard they say Christ was bad. Oh, they talking about the laws, the laws, the laws, the laws, the laws. The laws. The laws. The laws. Hey, hey, Saturday, the laws. hey, they don't go out, boy. They they remember everything. That's how they catch on, man. Yeah, yeah they ain't gonna forget. I know if I was a kid, I probably remember. Mm -hmm. Like man, I remember the Black Panther Party uh, breakfast. That I used to get. And I was a little wow. old kid. Uh -huh. A little old kid. I, all I remember seeing pancakes and brothers with leather jackets and big afro. <laughs> That's all I remember. I don't remember a word they said, but I remember they they had their jackets on. You know, they was feeding us, That's and epic. I was happy. That's epic. You know what I mean? But it's in my mind now. I remember. You know what I'm saying? So it's important that we get this word out, man, and and be visuals. That's another thing when we're out there speaking. We're visually seen. And not only, we can see, I've seen kids walk by us with their mamas and just dead stop in their tracks. And just look up at us. Trying to figure out, their mama got to come jerk them by the uh, head. Come on here. <coughs> you know, right? Yeah. We didn't see that before, man. So, I mean, that's what it's about. Let's go to, um, read Amos 3 and 3 again. 
Amos 3, verses 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion war in the forest when he have no prey? Right, I mean, think about what he just said. Will a lion roar? Oh, that's my, I get my little notes. I, I've been dropping these like uh, <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. I've been preaching. to drop it down. <laughs> like, the priest says we cut out my ears. They fall apart, man. <laughs> I got a thousand of these little precepts. <laughs> if, you, if you think about me, man, you, you should live and breathe precepts. Yeah. I got precepts all over my wall, man. I got precepts all in my car. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere. Live and breathe these precepts because it's going to save you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's going to save you. So um, sometimes you remember a precept just like that. Mm -hmm. Depending on how serious it hits you, how, how hard it hits you. You know what I mean? John 8, 44. When that hit me, I never forgot. It was just boom. Yeah. You know, he is the devil. That's yeah. what he is. Mm -hmm. You love your father the devil. Never forgot. That's why you only hear work. You know, yeah. John 10 and 10. I remember that. John 10 and 16. Right off the back. That, uh, he has another foe. You know what I'm saying? There's certain verses you never lose. Revelation 2 and 9. You never lose that. Mm -hmm. You know, Revelation 13 and, and, and mm. yeah, 13 <laughs> and 10. You never lose that. He didn't go into captivity. Shot, uh, lead into captivity. Shot, go into captivity. Never. Those verses must come out. They gotta come out. You gotta. The reason why the most I make verses like that stick. So when you go out and about, you can bring them out. Yeah. It's the reason why he make those sticking, you know, like grits. So um, uh, you read that. Give me Exodus four and ten. Huh? When you look at the movements of the uh, of our people here in America, we have. Uh, Martin Luther King, who's that that sat on the buses, Isaac? Uh, Rosa, Parks. Rosa Parks. That began a movement. Where did it begin? Did it begin inside? Mm -hmm. It was outside. 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 When you look at Malcolm X, when uh, the brother from Islam got beat up and was in the jail, what movement took place? Malcolm X took all the uh, brothers from Islam outside and stood in front of the hospital. Million or the precinct. Mark, precinct, yeah. You know? All these marches, the Million Man March is another one. Everything that we do is in the public eye. Yep. Like I said, our nation of people don't hide anything. That's how you know we're the Israelites. We do the same thing our forefathers did. We stand outside to hear the word. No other people do that. Nobody else does that. You know? Of course, the heathens used to do it. They used to go under the gardens, up on the mountains, under the trees. <coughs> the heathens used to have to sacrifice their... Uh, the black witch doctor stuff. Now they now they do a Psalms 83 and craft the council. Everything is craft the council now. They do things in the dark. That's why they right. in the dark don't come to light. That's right. We already out there in the light. <laughs> That's right. We in the light. You know, we are the light. You doing 40 low? Yeah. Uh, 4 10. Uh, give me Exodus 3 and 1 here. When you come outside, they go inside. <laughs> right. But we're uh, starting to fight off of this style. So Exodus 3 and 1. Is that how hard? 3 verses 1. Uh -huh. the land. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, mm -hmm. his father in law, the priest of Midian, mm -hmm. and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of the Most High, even to Herod. Her Her and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, a flame, a fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, mm -hmm. and the bush was not consumed. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Mm -hmm. And when the Most High saw that he turned aside to see, the Most High called unto him out of the midst of the bush, mm -hmm. Come on. and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, but oh, sorry, put off the shoes from off thy feet. Jump to verse 7 now. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by the reason of their 
taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. So he says, I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. That means he stood up off his throne. For him to say that, he said, I have come down to deliver them from the hands of the Egyptians. He came off his throne. They're about to get delivered. That's heavy. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large and large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay, so this is the most high getting off his seat. Let me show you when your house shot got off his seat. Nothing happened when he got up. Okay? See, Yahushai gets his power from the Most High. He can't do nothing without the Most High giving him that authorization. Go to Acts. And go to Acts 7 and go to the last two verses, Doc. Acts 7 and the last two verses. Acts 7, verse 59. I'm going to read verse 59 and 60. Uh, go to verse 56. Acts 7 verse 56. 55, I'm sorry. 55. Acts 7 verse 55. Uh huh. But he being full of the Holy Spirit. Who is he? That is Stephen. Go ahead. Look up steadfastly into heaven. Uh huh. And saw the glory of Yahweh. He saw the glory of the Most High. Did it say he saw the Most High? Nope. It said he saw the glory of the Most High. Come on. And Yahweh saw standing on the right hand. Of Yahweh. So he saw Yahweh, he didn't see the Most High. Come on. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Yahweh. Uh, so he saw him standing on the right hand. I cut that Trinity too, it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's telling you. He's <laughs> so many of them. So many. He said that he was standing on the right hand. So Yahweh is standing too, but did he come down on earth to deliver? He could have came and swooped Stephen up, took him back into the spirit world. Right? Where, where he is. He didn't do that. Keep going. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And stoned him. Now drop down to 60. So Stephen was stoned. Mm -hmm. Yahweh didn't come get him. Come on, let's see if we're going to get him after he gets... Uh, Stop. Go ahead. Uh, verse 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. In, yeah. Go ahead. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He just fell asleep. He didn't get delivered. He, he had to drive with everybody else. He said too much tribulation, right? Yeah, we got to go through it. Uh -huh. But you always try to point is, the Most High, if He stands up to deliver us, we will get delivered. If Yahweh side stands up, we ain't get delivered unless the Most High tells us to come down and get us. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that the judgment hadn't hit. There was no judgment at that point. It's going to come, but it's not for that particular time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's what that was my main point. Because remember, this message is: Is it effective to speak outside? And what is the effectiveness? When the Most High comes down, He brings judgment and He brings a message. This was a message to Paul, you know what I mean? For him to reminisce on what he did, he killed his own brother after he woke up, but that's it. So that's why I said, yeah, we have to be uh, very careful when we see our brother and pass away. When they pass away in the streets, mm -hmm. and we think, uh, you know, um, the Most High took them so he could be with them or whatnot. No, the Most High takes away the righteous to prevent them from the day of judgment, too. Read um, Isaiah 57 and 1. Isaiah 57 and 1. Isaiah 57 verses 1. The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart. The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart. So when Stephen perished, was he around his uh, kid? Was he around brethren who cared? Mm -mm. They all stole him and killed him. No one laid it to heart. Go ahead. And merciful men are taken away. Uh -huh. None consider that the righteous is yeah, taken yeah. away from the yeah. evil to come. Right, so the righteous are taken away from sometimes before the evil to come. Stephen was one of the first disciples to be taken off the earth. 
The rest died horrific deaths. Horrific deaths. Peter, you know, uh, uh, John, the Revelator, all these do dudes died horrific deaths. All right. John actually lived the longest, but all the disciples died terrible deaths. Nathaniel, all of them. Think about when Moses, uh, I'm sorry, uh, moving on. Uh, when, when you see that Moses, when he came down in the book of Exodus uh, to speak with the Most High, the Most High gave him sharp, he gave him sharp instructions to go to the people of Israel to tell, tell the elders what's going to happen. What would happen if Moses didn't do that? <laughs> Here we got somebody else. Yeah, we killed him right it's on the So, I mean, we have a mission. The message has been given to us. We've been called. We've also been chosen to a certain degree. We don't know how far along this is. We don't know if we've actually been chosen to the end. Right. But to be called, we're here. We're being devout as we can right now. This is what it's called to be a devout man. When you see these churches uh, or these uh, denominations, and you see different brethren in these places, there's always a core group that's always there. Always. They open up the service. They're there like plopper, right? You always see that. Um, Israelite congregations are the same way, but they don't know if they chose them. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just devout in their in their dealings. Mm -hmm. They're devout because they want to be saved mm -hmm. in the end. You know what I'm saying? We just want to be saved, just like everybody. So we're giving it our best shot. We're trying to be perfect to do what's right. You know what I mean? There's brothers who are at home studying the scriptures. They're trying their best to do what's right. A lot of us are afraid to come out because they believe that their sin is just so out of control that they're afraid to come around the brothers because they say to themselves, man, we're not ready for this. I gotta still, I gotta stop smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I gotta stop doing this. I gotta stop being an alcoholic. You know, brothers are ashamed at their secrets, at the uh, secret sins. A lot of uh -huh. brothers are afraid of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we pray for those brothers to get stronger. Well, that's why the most eyes you gotta come together and come together. Right. Brothers, so they can help you take that step to get off those certain things that's, you know, destroying your body, basically, you know what I mean? Yeah, I pray for them, brothers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I pray for them. And let them know you're praying for them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you, brother. Of course. You know what I mean? Of course. You mean Exodus 4 and 10? Yeah, it's, uh, that brotherhood is big, man. It's heavy. That's in my pocket, bro. Mm. Heavy subject. Exodus 4 and 10. Exodus 4, verses 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O, o my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here to, oh, sorry, here to for, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. <clears throat> but I am slow of speech and of slow of tongue. Okay, what does that mean? He said, I'm of slow speech and I am of slow tongue. Because um, he, he, was, uh, he was raised as an Egyptian. Okay, can so, you prove that he was raised as an Egyptian? Yeah. What scripture can you give me to show somebody else who don't know that? That yeah, he was lie. raised as an Egyptian. Okay, what can I do that? Was he slow of speech? Was he really slow of speech? No. No? How can you prove that? Isaac, how can you prove that? Hmm? And his speech. Yeah. So let's get that. Acts 7 and 22. Yeah, remember this in it? We just read uh, Acts 7, didn't we? 7 56. Yeah, and it was Stephen telling the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. Because he talks about the whole heritage of Israel. Yeah, read Acts 7 22. Acts 7, verses 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And was mighty in the words. And mighty and in words. Mighty in words and in deeds. And in deeds. So Moses was mighty in words and in deeds. So if he was mighty in words and in deeds of the Egyptians, Isaac, how is he slow in speech to the Most High? We stand before the Most High. How is he slow in speech then? If he was mighty in words and in deeds to the Egyptians. Must mean something else. Huh? Must mean something else. Right. What is it? How could he be speaking slow? And he said, I can't speak eloquent. It's one clue. What does the most high? What's his what's his what's his, what's his pure language? Hebrew. 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 Right. No, that's that's what I initially was getting to. Yeah. <laughs> so the Lasha Arkadash. 
He can speak <laughs> purely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, look, he said, go and speak to your people. Moses didn't speak Hebrew. Right. So the most I got mad and said, you know what? Tell your brother Aaron. Mm -hmm. Aaron grew amongst his brother. Right. So he knew the language. Mm -hmm. right. So when you look at some of these churches, they'll tell you, oh, Moses just stuttered. <laughs> he couldn't speak well. He had a stuttering problem. You know? <laughs> and so that goes against the scriptures. You know? Because when you watch it, <laughs> when you watch the movies, they don't even fill you in. You watch Ten Commandments, they don't fill you in. Today I was watching it before the video. So they start, when you watch Ten Commandments, watch when he's standing before the Most High, the Most High says, uh, I'm going to sing to your people. And he says, can we use Aaron? And Aaron just pops up. <laughs> Aaron just pops up. They don't argue this point. But the main key is, he spoke Egyptian. He was a prince. He was a king. He didn't have to deal with the slaves. They had to listen to what he said in the Egyptian language. They had to learn his language. Like we do with Ishikar when he come up here. We said, man, speak English, man. Speak English. <laughs> Just speak Spanish for hours, then let's speak English. It's the same thing. Moses couldn't speak Hebrew. Read on that. You uh, still Exodus. Oh, okay. Exodus 4, who is it, 10? Mm -hmm. Or 11. Verse 11. Verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who have made, make of the dumb, or the deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Mm -hmm. Have not I, I the Lord? So he's telling Moses, look, I don't care, man. You can't speak Hebrew. Go talk to your people. So it's the same thing here in the States. We here in America. We speak English. Our people speak English. He said, go speak to them. Whether you deaf, dumb, blind, crazy, oofa, ootu, tutu. Go speak to your people. You don't care. No, don't give me no excuse. I'm sending you to talk to your people to wake them up. And that's the whole point, man. Our people, we got to understand, we have to go out and deal with our people. That's, that's when you read that, that's, that's even taken to another level. Because when you read that, the most I tell you, you made a person deaf. I made a person blind, you know what I mean? In life, when you be born, you know what I mean? So that's taking like on another level of what the Most High does, you know? Read the uh, 12 verse actually. Read uh, the verse 12. Verse. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Mm -hmm. And he said, O oh, my Lord, sin, sin, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Okay, so let me, let me... Uh, expound on this. So, for example, your mm -hmm. Say the Most High came down, or or brought you in. Say you were seeking the Most High. The Most High said, "Okay, I'm gonna allow you to run into a bush like this." Mm -hmm. And he says, "I want you to go to the Dominican Republic and talk to your people, and you can't speak a word Spanish. Mm -hmm. And you go over there and try. Mm -hmm. The Most High sent somebody to aid you, to aid you, mm -hmm. to interpret everything." Mm -hmm. Go to Haiti, same thing. Go to Haiti. As long as you got faith, brother, step up, man, out of nowhere. It's funny the way it works, but it's like that. It's, uh, we see it here. When, we, when we're teaching this truth, when we're out on the street, one brother leave, another brother come in. And we're like, man, it's the darndest thing how things work. You know, it's just the way the Most High has it. Brothers will step up out of thin air. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing because it's not about us. Yeah, it's not us. You got attitudes and all that stuff. It's not about us. It's about him. He wants his word to go out. Yeah, it's, it's, that's all spiritual too because basically most I say I don't need you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For somebody to come in and go, most I say I don't need. I would wake somebody else up. Just that quick. You he would have did Moses the same way. Right. Mm -hmm. Isaac one to fourteen is the, it was the Most High angered, angry because. He had a lack of faith? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. He, the most I, well, like he said, who created the deaf, the blind, the dumb? I created you for this. You are my shovel. You are my hammer. I created you to do this, and you telling me no? So he uh, had a change of heart just that quick because he wanted to know who was fair. It's funny with men, mostly men, I'm going to say men, men have a yearning to learn where they come from. They hit a certain age. I, 
I don't see too many women like this. Mm -hmm. Women just pretty much just cool about. It. They'll go and get their women to get their DNA swab, swab, and that's it. It's quick. It's easy. I know who I am. I come from Africa, China, <laughs> Europe. Right. You know, ten percent, fifteen, twenty. You know what I mean? With brothers, we want to go deep. We always want to know where we come from when we hit a certain age. I got a cousin. He was in jail his whole life. I got a, a history of my family tree that my uh, pops gave me. And my cousin been in jail his whole life. I ain't never heard from him. Finally, he gets at his auntie who contacts us wanting to get the family tree. Wow. After like 40 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now, he wants to know where he came from. But see, it's just a yearning within men. Well, we got to find out where we come from. And so this is why Esau, this, I don't know, this has got to be a reason why Esau don't really pay too many of older brothers any mind. You know what I mean? Because we start searching for things. We get angry. Uh, you look at most of the actors that Esau picks. They normally pick men that are happy and don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't know anything about their history. Like uh, this dude, this brother from uh, the play, the... Uh, Antagonist of Amistad. What's the name of that brother? He played the actor in Amistad. You talking about the Hamite dude? Yeah. Is it Hamite? Yeah, yeah, Hamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know his name. Okay, well, when they found him, I heard the story. And when they found him, they found him in London, and he was a happy. First thing Esau said, this is what Esau, Esau was talking. He said, We picked this guy because he was happy. He was happy about uh, just wanting to act. He didn't have any anger in himself, no hostility, he wasn't mad at the world, so we got him. Mm -hmm. In other words, we can work with him because he's not an angry black man, Calm. basically. And so, you know, now, if you watch the role that he played, this dude is like getting more and more serious with his roles. Mm -hmm. And he's starting, you know, he's reading more. So a lot of, brothers, a lot of uh, movie stars don't really like dealing with brothers that are older. You know, they're trying to just drift away from them, you know, and they get the guys that they can pretty much mold still. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Fishburne, you know, he's another one. He's been around, he, mm -hmm. he does just enough. You know what I mean? Denzel Washington, he knows who he is, mm -hmm. but he ain't gonna play no dumb role. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like they know just who to get. So they focus on the younger brothers so they can just rip, put them on TV, take them off like this brother in the Black Panther. They're ripping and taking them. But um, <clears throat> when we hit a certain age, like Moses was 80 years old when this happened. He was 40 years old when he started finding out what everything was about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's when he changed. So um, this is interesting, man. Let's go to Exodus 33. 33 and 9. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. Exodus 33, verses 11. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face, as a man speak unto his friend. And he returned again unto the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacles. Okay, so Moses spoke face to face with the Most High, right? So by him doing that, <coughs> did they speak in secret? Did Moses speak in secret with the Most High? Yeah, he was in the mountain. Mm -hmm. It was just him and Moses. And, and, and Moses. There's nobody else with him. So uh, it's interesting, like we said, uh, we can find scriptures where the Most High spoke to Israel in secret, and this is the time that he brought messages. Give me Genesis 18 and 1. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Uh -huh. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Mm -hmm. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Verse 20. We'll stop right there, 20. And the Lord said, Because thou cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, it is great, and because their sin is very grievous. So he said, look, man, I'm going to destroy this place, Sodom and Gomorrah, because their sin is very grievous. I'm about to bring judgment. 
I'm going to tell you because you are my servant. You are my friend. I'm going to let you know. You are the father of all nations of Israel, basically. All right, so the Most High delivered two messages. One, a message of information. The second one, judgment. And where did he do this? Outside. He did it in the secret, but he did it outside. Give me Genesis 49.1. So the Most High can use uh, angels to deliver a message. He can use prophets to deliver messages. He can use even the heathens to deliver a message to Israel. Go ahead, read that. Genesis, Genesis 49, 49, verses 1. Uh -huh. And Jacob called unto his son, sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I will tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. All right, so this is Jacob about to what? Deliver a message to his sons. Where did he get this message from? The Most High put this prophecy on his mind. Go to uh, Numbers 12 and 1. So that was another message for them to relate to their children. Forever. Numbers 12 and 1. Numbers 12 verses 1. And Miriam, Miriam, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses uh -huh. because of the Ethiopian woman, which was uh, Moses' wife, come on, whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. He had married an Ethiopian woman, come on, who was actually a Midianite. Go ahead. They, and in they said, Have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Uh -huh. Have he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Mm, come on. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses, and to Aaron, and to Mary, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacles of the congregation. And the three came out. So right here, the Most High came on earth. Came on earth, he dealt with Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Came down and he spoke in secret to these three. Come on. And the Lord came down into the pillar of a cloud. Uh -huh. And stood in the door of the tabernacle. And stood in the door of the tabernacle. Come on. And called Aaron and Miriam. Uh -huh. And they both came forth. All right, come on. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among if you, there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, uh, and will speak unto him in a dream. Right. So Miriam didn't get this vision. Aaron didn't get this vision. Come on. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? So Moses is the one that he's going to choose. Come on. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. Huh. Even apparently. And not in dark speeches. He's not going to even speak in secret, secret, secret. He's going to tell them exactly what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. It's like he talked to Abraham. Talk to him directly where he can understand. Him. Go ahead. And the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold, therefore, therefore, wherefore, therefore, wherefore, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, wherefore, then were he not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. All right, so... What's about to happen here is the Most High is about to tell you in this verse. Come on. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And behold, Mary became leprous, white as snow. Uh -huh. And Aaron looked upon Mary, and behold, she, she was, was leprous. leprous. So she was white. So this is a verse that a lot of brothers don't bring out, showing that Mary was a dark-skinned woman. She became leprous as snow. She became a white woman. But this was a time when the Most High came on earth and he brought not a message, he brought judgment. Brought the judgment on Miriam. <clears throat> Why? Because she was trying to usurp authority over her brother Moses. Mm -hmm. that, was the whole, that was the whole case. So that was, a, that was a message of judgment. Let's go to Genesis. Actually, we read Genesis 19 earlier about Sodom and Gomorrah. With Sodom and Gomorrah, one thing about those angels, when they came down and spoke with Lot, they brought a message and they brought judgment. They told Lot to get his things, get ready to take off. Now, why would you mess with some angels that's coming down to bring judgment? Do you understand what that means? If you mess with some angels strictly coming down just to bring judgment on her, and you are tampering with them, that's crazy. you're a dead man. 
You're a dead man. But see, the beauty about that, they didn't know they were angels. Right. Just like the scripture said, when we out there in the street speaking, you only another person standing and looking, he might be an angel. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has a human form, mm -hmm. just like us, but you don't know. That's the beauty of how the most side works, baby. Yeah, that's why he says, test every spirit. Don't be quick to judge, brothers, mm -hmm. right off the bat. Test them how? By the scriptures. It's easy to find out if they're of the Lord or if they're not of the Lord. Because if you go at them with a scripture and they come back with a scripture, mm -hmm. you go at them with another scripture, they come back with another scripture. Yeah. Be yeah. careful. Yeah. Be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because that can happen, but then you have Christians who don't understand. But there's every now and then you get that one brother that knows the scriptures and he knows the interpretation just like you do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to walk carefully with mm -hmm. brothers like that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But there's also brothers out there who are, who are death angels. They ain't going to say nothing. You know what I mean? They ain't going to say nothing. They ain't going to just come listen to you and see what you say. Mm -hmm. You go off. Anything can happen to you too. Uh, Scary thought, but it's the truth. Test the spirits, man. Test the spirits. Like how should I say what? Um, when uh, who's that? Peter walked up to him and he says, "Hey, we saw another brother the, uh, taking demons out using your name." What did how should I say? He turned around and says, "If they have God and they, and they walk up like God, leave them alone." He said, "Leave them alone." If they doing if they doing miracles in my name, doing miracles in his name, leave him alone. Oh. Because if he had said one little thing wrong, guess what? It backfire. Got to be careful with that. It's wisdom. So I, I just want to show you. Give me the uh, Judges five and thirteen. You all, you got any questions, comments? Yeah, Okay, good. Judges 5 and 13? Yeah. Judges 5, verses 13. Uh -huh. Then he made him that remain of... Joshua, I'm sorry. Joshua. I said, I said Judges? Yeah. Joshua. Yahawashu. Yahawashai. Joshua. Joshua 5, verses 13. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Okay, so this can happen in real life. You know, sometimes you be just tripping like, man, I just see somebody. This can happen. Angel could pop up right in front of you, man. Dude had a, he had a, a sword in his hand. Go ahead. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us? Or for our adversaries. Huh. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth mm -hmm. and did worship and said unto him, What seeth my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoe from off thy foot. Now, Joshua could have came out swinging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He could have came out swinging. He could have said, man, I'm the captain of Israel, man. Who are you, who are you talking about? Who are you? Yeah, who are you? You are, you are in our lane. You, you are our care back. So I, that's why I say you got to be careful mm -hmm. how you deal with brother. This dude just popped up on him with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, move. Wow. See, he didn't know he was an angel. Yeah, so I mean, he asked the right question. He said, are you for us or for our adversary? I mean, that can happen in the camp. Mm -hmm. We've been camp teaching and, and just have shell shock syndrome because we done just got through dealing with this group of people, this group of people. Well, at the end of the day, brother just pop up. Boom. He got his Bible, got his sword in his hand, got his fringes on. He's like, look, man, you for us or you with them? Let me tell you this, brother. Every time we're with the ninnies, man, this brother always, when the brother, the, he used to always sit by the uh, the paper stand mm -hmm. before we went into Denny's to eat after camp. This dude would always sit there every time we come to camp, man. He had this big old stick. And he had a big old coat. And he was just standing right by the uh, coat. You couldn't even blend in with the uh, with the newspaper stand. Mm -hmm. But he would always sit there every time we come from camp. We, we, we used to always give him food after we got done. You know, gotcha. we water on food. This brother had a thick beard. Yeah, man, it was crazy. He had uh, woolly hair. Mm -hmm. Brown skinned brother, older brother, yeah. 
had a garment on. Wow. Had a garment on. Mm. And uh, a huge staff. Yeah. And he was sit his garment matched the newspaper stand. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it literally matched the newspaper yeah. stand. The brother would just <laughs> sit in an angle when you almost didn't even see him. Right, you didn't see him, yeah. You didn't even see him because it, it was nighttime. It was like this, yeah. just like this. And you walk up on him. <laughs> it was crazy. And the brother would be like, what did he say to us? He, he said, uh, we said, uh, brother, I think Anash asked him, was he hungry? And he, I think he lifted up his thing and he had to, you know, he saw a stick, but he's like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He used to be like, we was like, oh man. He had a Hebrew name, though. I, I can't remember what it was. He had a Hebrew name. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was a Hebrew but name. He, but he had that voice. He was like, yes, sir. He said, because I think it asked him, you hungry, get you some food. He's like, thank you, sir. Yo, thank you, sir. We'd be sitting there eating inside Denny's, <laughs> and a brother would be sitting there with a staff just looking at us outside. That's before y'all helped him? Before we told him he was going to come back and give him something. Yeah. He'd just be sitting there just looking at us, right? Mm -hmm. The whole time, man. And then <clears throat> we bring him something to eat. As soon as we bring him something to eat, he was, what happened? He's gone. God. Gone. Because <laughs> 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 we were standing out in the front of the parking lot and talked for a minute. We was like, damn, where the brother go? It's like, damn, we were just talking to the brother. He was gone, man. It was crazy, though, man. Hey, yeah. right now, not. Hey. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling him to finish my story, but it's no lie, dude just poof, in, poof, out. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that is. But it was just like this, it was just yeah, like just the script. Like yeah. And, you know, you just got to walk carefully, man. You, you know, like, uh, who's that? Uh, who's that? J. Edgar Hoover says, uh, who's that said that? Walk with a, uh, carry a big stick and speak, speak. Slow, uh, quiet. Who was that? Sure. Which president said that? Yeah, but it was something like that, man. But just you just gotta be careful on how you deal with people. You know, very important, man. Mm -hmm. So he told him, "Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place where I'm thou standeth is holy." And Joshua did so. It's the same thing that Yahushua told Moses: loosen your shoes. And so we just gotta be careful. When you look at the scriptures, these scriptures are our home base, man. You know, brother said, man, how do you know that the prophecies, what you're reading is true? Why? Because when you look at the scriptures, when you go, go to Nehemiah 13, huh? when you go to Nehemiah 13, this is how you know the prophecies are true. When we be talking about Esau as the so-called white man, when we say all these different things, we ain't saying it just because we want, want to uh, persecute these people. It's written in the scriptures. Yeah. Go to Nehemiah 13 and read, um, what do I want you to get? Uh, 23, 25. Uh, Nehemiah 13, yeah, 23. Start 23. Uh, this is uh, Nehemiah 13, verses 23. In those days also saw I the Jews that married wives of Ashdod uh -huh. and of Ammon. And of Moab. Who is Ammon? Who is Moab? Moab, that's the um Ammon and East. The... Moab who are the uh, children of Lot and they represent the day of some state, the um, Chinese and the Japanese. Right. The Chinese and Japanese. Ammon and Moab. Alright, come on. And their children Spake half in speech of Ashdod. Some spoke half in Ashdod, come on. And could not speak in the Jews' language. They couldn't speak in Elisha and Kadesh, come on. But according to the language of each people. Right. But according to the language of each heathen people. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I contend with them. Uh -huh. And cursed them. Okay. And smite certain of them. Mm -hmm. Smite pluck, means to hit. Mm -hmm. Come on. And pluck off their hair. And made them swear by the Most High, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons. You shall not give your daughters unto their sons. Because they will speak half in Ashdod, half in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Nor take their daughters unto your sons. Uh -huh. For yourselves did not Solomon, Solomon. I mean, sorry, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Uh -huh. Yet among many nations, was there no king like him mm -hmm. who was beloved of the Most High? And the Most High made 
him king over all Israel. Mm. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. So why did he get so mad that uh, these men were marrying Moabites, Ammonites, and Ashdodonites? Why was he mad? Where did he get this information from? Remember, they had lost the book. That's why Nehemiah and them were reading it in Nehemiah chapter 8 before the whole congregation of Israel. When you go through Chronicles, remember they lost the book and they found it again? So in order for them to be in compliance with the Most High, when they read that they were not supposed to be with Ashdod, Moab, Ammon, where are they getting that from? Read Nehemiah 13 and 1. Nehemiah 13 verses 1. Oh, that, on, oh, say, on that day, they read in the book of Moses. They read in the book of Moses on that day. Come on. In the audience of the people. That's what we just read in Nehemiah 8. Come on. And there, and there, sorry, and therein was found written that the Ammonites and the Moabites should not come unto the congregation of the Most High forever. That's why they were so pissed. They were like, look, man, it's in the book. They married these women. This is what the Most High told us not to do. Married Chinese, Japanese, and Africans. You don't think they could tell that they weren't who they were? Mm -hmm. They were able to look at the people then just like we're able to look at the people today and notice there's a difference between the Israelites and the other nations. You could see it. They knew that the Moabites were Moabites and the Ammonites were Ammonites. They knew it. Keep reading. Because they met not the children. Sorry, sorry. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Bellum against them, that he should curse them. How bid our our power turn the curses unto a blessing? Into a blessing. So our power turned. A, a curse into a blessing, right? So Moab and Ammon, because of what they did way back then, they can't be a part of us. When we go into the kingdom, remember, they were getting ready to go back into the kingdom in this chapter. They were getting ready to go back. And so they had to get themselves right. They had to get correct with the Most High before they started going back to the uh, land of Israel. Mm -hmm. When you look at Ezra chapter 10, this is when they started separating all the other people from them, right? Look at verse, uh, go to Ezra 10 and 17. Ezra 10 and 17. Ezra 10 verses 17. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. So they gave them some time to get rid of these wives. Uh -huh. To the kingdom. The Most High said, well, you know what, we're going to let these brothers decide themselves. Because it's too hard to just tell them. So we're going to let them know, look brother, if you need to get rid of your wives, you got a month to do it. Get your, get your house in order. Give them the money. Like, what did Abraham do to Hagar? Sent her away. When he sent her away, did he give her anything? Yeah, gave her water, some other stuff. Yeah, water, food, uh -huh. maybe some money. Yeah. They got, hey, they had time to get them in order. So this is what our forefathers did before they went into the land of Israel. This is what happened. It's the same thing with Hagar. What are they reading? They're reading the Old Testament. They're reading Genesis. They're seeing what the forefather Abraham did and the forefather Moses did. So yes, this is why when we read the book of Obadiah, and we see that Esau will be ruling. Esau uh, will be up in the nest of space with his nest, with his, with his satellites and all that. That's where we get that. We know Esau is the so-called white man based on the prophecies in this book. When we read Malachi, when he says, go, go to Malachi, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament prior to the book of Maccabees, okay, and uh, the Apocrypha. Two and one. Two and seven. Probably chapter one. Malachi chapter one, when it talks about Esau. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Malachi yeah. one and three. Okay. One and three, yeah, okay. Malachi uh, one, verses three. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his inheritance to waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to keep going? Okay. Where, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we, wish, we shall return and build the desolate places. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Uh -huh. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people 
against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Indignation forever. I wanted them to read those two verses because this was meant for us to see this and recognize who else did us wrong when we came out of Egypt. The Edomites did us wrong. And the Edomites are still ruling. So if our forefathers can re retrieve the book of the law in the book of Nehemiah, Ezra, and Chronicles, and see where error was when they were making babies with Ammon and Moab and Ashtar and all of the heathens, we should be able to look in this book and see in the end times who the Most High is angry with now. And he got mad at them for one little thing. They didn't give us any water or bread. So did Esau. But Esau had a chance to rule again. And what did he do this time? Ruled over us with a continual hatred. Continuous stroke. Continuous stroke. Isaiah 14. This is how we know who we are. This is how we know the children of Israel got to follow the protocol of the book. Follow the protocol of the Bible. All right? When you look at uh, King Solomon and King David, did they not speak with the, did they not fall in error to judgment? They both fell in error to judgment. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one according in one place. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled with all the houses where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. And there appeared unto them a cloven tongue. Sorry. They appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them uh, uh, utterance. Right, so they spoke in utterance, right? Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Right, so these Jews were devout men out of every nation because in Jerusalem you have people who were Jews in Jerusalem, but you know what? They weren't devout. You had men who were not devout in Jerusalem. You had more men who were devout that were scattered that came together. And just those men that were devout that came together from other nations made a large group of men. It's just like today. You don't see a lot of Hebrew Israelites. But every now and then you see brothers get together and those are the devout men of the nation. There's not a lot of us, man. There's not a lot of brothers in this truth that's devout, that's serious about doing this work. There's not a lot of brothers. You know, there's a lot of brothers that claim that they're Hebrew or Israelite, but they're not serious about, they're not really serious about going out there teaching their people. They're not that serious. Okay? So this is what we're doing. We're trying to uh, show our people, look, even in these times, our brothers got together. Okay? Read um, 14, the same chapter, verse 14. Acts 2, verses 14. Mm -hmm. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Uh -huh. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Mm -hmm. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith the power, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. One more verse. And on, sorry, and on my servant and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And they shall prophesy. So this is what we're seeing today on the social media. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you.
with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 